Hi everyone, thanks ever so much for all the lovely messages we've had the last few days about the new collection from Lisa Jones. These dies have been so popular, so much so that um, I was due to do another show yesterday on Create and Craft and we just didn't have enough stock left to do it um, because you loved it so much. <laughs> Um, and I know I've had a few messages, a lot of you were disappointed not to see the demos that I was planning to do. So I thought I would quickly do them now and just video them for you. Um, now, you'll have to bear with me because I haven't kind of cleared my desk or prepared. I've literally just thrown everything out of my bag um, from when I got back from Creating Craft last night on the desk. This is how I take my demos to create and craft to have all these little labeled wallets so I thought I'll just run through and we'll we'll do them you know I've got them all prepared ready to do so we might as well um, use them so let's start with this one and I'll show you how to make this card here so I've got all my bits and bobs here and I'm using everything from the collection basically so I've got some of the fabulous patterned cardstock um this is it's just beautiful the colors in this um let me grab the card stock pack to show you so the patterned card stock here this is the pack here and you've got a really beautiful selection in here you've got some foiled sheets as well with a lovely gold foil but the colors from this match the plain card stock that she's also brought out there's some of the gold foiling you can see and i love these polka dots and the colors are beautiful as are the plain cardstock colours. I just really love this colour palette that she's picked because I really like olive type greens with a bit of yellow in them. And this one here, I think, is a lovely sage. Um, you've got a navy there. And I particularly like this really light aqua. It's, I kind of think of it as eucalyptus colour. And then you've got a few brighter. You've got this lovely ocean teal colour, which is lovely and bright. You've got a nice neutral grey there, a nice neutral cream. And then I particularly love this dusky pink because this is a colour I kind of create quite a lot myself when I'm colouring. I use um, Tattered Rose Distress Ink because that's got that sort of, um, sort of dirty pink, you know, that dusky sort of pink. And then Miss Burgundy is gorgeous as well. So that's the... Um, the botanicals they're called so that's the plain cardstock set and then you've got these matching patterns so i'll be using those throughout so i thought i'd give you a quick flick through before we get going so i've got a white card blank and i'm going to use the frames and borders set and what i love about this is it not only cuts the outline but some of the dies cut a lovely thin border that you can put on and that gives a real professional look I think. So for this card I'm going to cut a piece from this of the larger rectangle and then I'm going to use one of the smaller inserts, I think it was this size here actually, yep, um, from some of this other patterned paper. I thought this um, sort of teal colour would really pop against that so I'm going to run those through my big shot now my big shot is slightly off camera but because I've had to put this Sizzix mat on top here um, to stop the glare from my light as you can see if I there's a bit of glare um, so I won't bring my big shot across here because it will slide on this mat so you'll have to just bear with me um, while I do the die cutting I did tell you this video was going to be a bit unpolished and quick <laughs> Um, so I'll just run those through. There we go. So I've got a fabulous background. And then you get obviously the lovely detailed piece. I just need to poke out like so um, and of course you can keep the the inner piece because that's a lovely mat mat and layer really for another card so I'll keep that to one side and let's pop these on the card front with a bit of double-sided tape I just love I because I personally I'm a bit scared of using patterned papers 
um, I see so many cards where people have used tons of different patterns and colours and it looks amazing and that kind of scares me because you know it can look horrible if you if you get that wrong <laughs> so I do particularly like it when you get a collection that's been designed to go together because you can't go wrong really these colours are all of a kind of similar tone so they do all work well together so now where have I put my glue here we go and I'll just put a few dots on here. Ooh, my glue's exploding. What I'll do is put a bit of glue on my finger and dab it on because these are quite delicate. And this is probably the easiest way to do it. I know Pete um, scribbles his onto the mat, which is another good way of doing it. There we go. So I can line that up with just a little border. These are so delicate that they look stunning if you use um, some of the opulent metallics with them because it is a lovely, delicate, fine border. There we go. And the beauty of using PVA glue is that I can wiggle that around to make sure it's straight. Now, you might think that looks a bit messy, but any glue that's seeping out will dry clear so you won't see it. So that's got a really nice background and what I'm going to do is stamp a sentiment in the middle and I'm going to do that next so that I can make sure my florals don't kind of go over it. So I'm going to use one of the new Pete Hughes, well they're not that new now actually, they were the end of last year. Um, there's so many nice ones, I'm going to use Good Vibes one and there is a stamp in there says let your dreams be your wings so that's going to look quite nice so let's pop that on there ink it up and then I'll do it slightly off to one side because I'm going to do a floral here so I'm not going to centralize this I'm going to do it slightly to the right and slightly up a bit like about there and then my floral can sit here and it won't get in the way so let's grab the floral sets and let's choose what floral we're going to use. So I'm going to use the Wild Blossom Corner set. And I think in this set, I think this smallest corner actually is going to work nicely with the scale of this. I could use the slightly larger one as well. But I think for balance, this one's probably the best for that size of rectangle. So we're going to go with that. And I've already got all these pieces of cardstock ready. Because I had them all ready for my show yesterday. But it didn't happen. So I'm going to use the lightest green. Now, of course, this is Sizzix cardstock. So I've got the choice of having that lovely linen texture or smooth. I'm going to go for the linen texture. So I'll pop that on my cutting plate. Get these bits of card off that are left over and i can do the rest while i'm here so in that same set you get other elements that you can layer up so if you have a look at your original for this one you can see i haven't poked out the pieces properly from last time i used it which is a bit naughty of me um for this one you've got one large floral which i think is it this one there's two different yeah it's that one so we're going to cut that one and then there's a smaller floral which is this one here so i can cut those two and then layer them on top so we'll cut the background from the green and then we'll do the larger flower from the sort of burgundy color and the smaller flower from pink and we're going to go with the texture on the cardstock so i'll just run that through my big shot apologies i'll be slightly off screen as i do this So I've got my fabulous background. And this is the beauty of the, these collections, actually. You've, you've got everything done for you. You've got all the colours that work together. And then you, you haven't even got a fussy cut to layer up the florals. You know, you've got your background here. And you haven't got to pick out elements yourself and, and snip them away from, from this die. 
you've got one already to go on top. So it's been really, really well thought out, this collection. Now, if you wanted to give dimension, you could pop these elements up with foam tape if you, if you wanted to have a bit more 3D. I'm just going to stick them down with glue. And it's easy to line up because you've got that little, little semicircle there of the cutout piece. So, and ignore that bit of glue there because once that dries, you won't see it. And then I've got this small pink flower. So just a little dot of glue on the back of that one. And just need to line that up like so. That's it. And then that fits nicely over the top of that. So that's a really quite quick and simple card, actually, but really effective. And of course, you can play around with different colour schemes for this. Um, but yeah, really effective. So that's the first demo. Let me quickly clear my desk and we'll get on to the next one. Right. So the next demo I had prepared is this one here. And I mentioned when I did the last demo about how fabulous those de delicate frames look if you cut them from some of the opulent cards. So for this one, I have actually grabbed some rose gold opulent cards. So we're going to go with that. So let me bring back in my frames and border set. And I think it was the second to largest. Yeah, that's the one. Um, of the ovals that I used. The, the largest one doesn't have a very thin border. It's the next one down. And of course, it will cut out the circle as well. So I'll get a bonus circle that I can use on another card. And I love this set because you've got the thin rectangles. These are great for sentiments, particularly that smallest one. Then you've got the larger rectangles, which are great for mats and layering. And then circles as well. I, I I do gravitate towards circles a lot when I'm sort of designing my card layouts. So I'm going to go with that. So we'll die cut that first. And let me bring in my card front so it's ready. And then while I'm die cutting, I'm going to add on some elements from a couple of the other sets. Actually, I have grabbed some of the foliage from the wreath set, which where have I put it? Here it is over here. So from the wreath set, the wild wild leaves wreath, you get this fabulous big large wreath, but you also get extra elements that you can layer up on top of here to make the wreath really full and sort of 3G if you want to. But these work brilliantly on their own. So what I'm going to do is die cut some florals but use these leaves. So I've already done these because obviously this was a, a demo I prepared to do on television. So I was thinking of speed a bit. So I've already die cut, you can see from watercolour card, all those elements and I've coloured them in with oxide inks. I've used speckled egg, iced spruce and I think the other one, yeah, bundled sage. So those are the three colours I've kind of used. Um, this particular one I think looks like a eucalyptus so I've gone more with the blues on that um, and then the greens on some of the others so I've already done that step to save time but I want some florals as well and the beauty is I've got all these different elements that I can choose from so I think I'm going to grab from the wild blossom border set this large floral and then these two here I think are the perfect size to work on that large circle. So I'm going to die cut those from watercolour card as well. And I'll do that at the same time as die cutting my rose gold circle. So again, you'll just have to bear with me. I'm slightly off camera with my machine, but it's um, it's easier than trying to bring my machine across. <laughs> so I'll run those through and that's going to give me a lovely rose gold frame and then three florals, which I need to colour. So I can pop those back on the set. Right, so I've got three flowers to watercolour. And this is, um, I'm using Hobbycraft watercolour card here. Um, actually, it's not Hobbycraft, it's Dale Rowney, but you get it in Hobbycraft. And it's one that's quite often on half price sale. So whenever I see it on sale, I get a couple of packs of it. So I've got... 
really good circle that I can use for something else. But most importantly, I've got that really beautiful, delicate frame. So that's going to give me the basic shape of my card. So I can put my floral on around that to create a bit of a wreath. So the first thing I'm going to do is stick this rose gold frame on. And my glue is just exploding everywhere for some reason. So I'm just going to put it on my mat, actually. Maybe because it's a bit warm in my craft shed. It wants to explode. And to make my life easier, I'm going to grab my Sizzix tweezers. And I think the best thing to do for this, actually, is to just dab it in the glue. Again, don't worry if you can see bits of glue on the outside because they'll um, dry clear and matte. So we'll pop that like so, press it down. You do have to press down carefully with these because they're so delicate, you can lose the shape quite easily and they can go a bit wonky. So that's gonna give me a lovely wreath shape and I've already stamped a nice sentiment that's gonna go about there and then my florals will go here. So while I've got this out, I might as well pop that on. And I'm gonna pop that on actually with some little foam pads because it would be nice to have a bit of dimension to that. So I don't think I need to hold that with tweezers. It's not that delicate. So I'll just put either end like so. And then that can kind of go about there up to the edge like so. I haven't taken the back off that. There we go. Perfect. And now I'm ready to colour my florals. So let's just clear a bit of space. And I'll just wipe up this glue actually, and I'm going to use this mat. I hope it's, yeah, you can just about see it in shot. And what I'm going to do is watercolour these with some oxide inks. And I'm going to use, let's have a look. Um, I think we're going to go with the new um, Pitch Flamingo, actually. But it's possibly a bit bright, so I might tone it down with some Victorian Velvet. So I'll put a bit of Victorian Velvet on the mat. A bit of the new Pitch Flamingo. And then one of the florals, I think this one here, I'm going to do with Speckled Egg. So it's a nice turquoise. So I think you can just see those in shot. So what I'm going to do is bring my water across, grab a watercolour brush, and I'll start with this one that's going to be blue. And I've picked oxide inks for this because they do give that lovely chalky finish. And I think this kind of goes with this colour scheme that Lisa's chosen for this collection. I'm kind of replicating the colours that you get anyway with the, with the cardstocks. Um, and I'm just going to mix these two pinks together to give me a kind of mid shade. That kitsch flamingo is a bit too pink on its own. But if I mix it with the Victorian velvet, I get a nice sort of dusky pink, a bit like the pink that's in the paper collection. Um, now, of course, I could just use the paper. And the reason I'm, I'm watercolouring is I do quite like the look you get with when you watercolour your own florals because you do get a bit of variation and I'm just going to go back in and put a bit more dark in the centre there. Um, it's a less flat look than using coloured cardstock and you know it's just a different look really. So I've got my heat tool and I'm just going to quickly dry those off. And you can see where I've added that extra bit of dark in the middle it's given me a bit of shade variation if you feel that you've gone a bit heavy-handed with the color you can always dab a bit of water on these and dab some of the color off so don't sort of worry if you um don't like the color you've got there we go those will be dry enough to use so i will just give my mat a quick wipe because no doubt otherwise i'll put my elbow straight in that Right, so now we can put our card together. So I'm going to start with the florals and I'll start with the largest floral, which I will use a foam pad for that. 
because I'm going to be tucking all the leaves underneath these flowers. So it's going to make my life easier to have them raised up a little bit. So I'll do all the florals with foam pads. And we'll tuck that one like so. And then this lovely little blue one. Might need a smaller foam pad for that one, actually. Use one of these small ones. Like so. There we go. And then that can sit like so. I followed the curve and now I can just put all of these elements. I'm going to start with this biggest one. This looks like um, kind of olive leaf to me, which is lovely. And I'll just put a few dots of glue on the back. And again, I'm going to just kind of follow the shape. I'm going to tuck that underneath like so. And then we'll Keep it kind of symmetrical, so I'll use another fairly large sprig. This one I've coloured more in a green. This is more bundled sage. And this one's going to follow the curve slightly there. Then I've got this one that looks like eucalyptus. And this has got a lovely curve to it, so I'm going to pop that one there so that it kind of comes in a little. There we go. And... For the rest, I think. Now, don't be afraid to snip into these if you feel that you know you're, you want these to fit where you want them to fit. So, um, the stem on that one's quite large, and I think I just want to tuck it here, overlapping slightly with that one. So, I'm just going to trim the end off, and then I've got these two smaller pieces, which I think I'm going to pop here, just to follow follow the shape. And just fill in those little gaps there. So, and then one maybe here, just peeking out from under the flowers there. Yeah, perfect. Now the the one I did in advance, I won't won't bother doing this now for speed. But you can see I've got a few clear dots there. I just added some of the tonic um, nouveau drops in clear, just to put a few little. They look like sort of dew drops. So that's the next demo. And I think I've got two more to share with you. So I will quickly tidy up and we'll move on to the next one. So this next demo is bringing in the fabulous alphabet set that you get in this collection. And it's called Serif Alphabet. Find my die. Um, I love this. It's a really good size. They're about, the letters are about three and a half centimetres high. I've put mine on magnetic sheet just so that I can keep them tidy. But you can see they're a really big, bold size. Um, great for this kind of thing. These would be lovely for wedding invites. So I'm going to use a couple of those. Um, the beautiful thing about this set, actually, I really like is that you get two different size ampersands. So depending on what project you're doing for a card, you're probably going to be relatively limited on space. So it's great to have a smaller one to use. Um, but, you know, if you're doing sort of table decorations or, or bigger projects maybe for a wedding um the larger one's lovely as well so it's great to have both so i'll do the same initials which are mine and my other half <clears throat> that will frighten him if he sees this he'll think i'm planning a wedding so that's um my letters ready and i've because this was going to be my tv demo i've got everything prepared so i've got um a plain white card blank and this is some of the pattern paper all the pattern paper is double sided so you've got the choice whether to go for this paler with the white background or the negative um, with the lovely blue background i'm going to go for that one so i'll pop that on in a second and then i'm going to pop a circle in craft card so we'll grab the circles from the frames and border set and i'll remind myself what i used I use that one for the outlining craft and then I've done the same as I did before and I've cut the thin border from a nice bright, this is some of the um, lovely teal cardstock. So those are ready to run through the machine. And then I'm going to do this floral spray, but I'll die cut these first and I've got all my bits of card ready for that. Um, 
but let's do this bit of die cutting first then we'll do the florals after that so i'm going to be slightly off camera as i run these through i'm afraid so i'll die cut the circles first let's trim this down actually so i can fit them both through in one run and then i love this sort of ocean teal color it's a lovely vibrant teal right so that's my circles so i'll run those through that's going to give me quite a nice sort of background and as a bonus I've got an extra little um, frame in the craft so that's going to be my background and then again I've got a bonus little circle on the inside and my little delicate frame is still in the die you've got a release hole on each side to so just gently poke that out and do it carefully because these are very delicate and you want to try and keep it in a circle shape so that's my circles and let's do the letters while i'm at it so i've got those ready and i need a bit of cream card for those this is the cream card from the botanicals set of cardstock and i'm going to cut it so that you can see the textured side and those three Now these would look beautiful if you wanted to go for a bit of metallic. I thought the cream was quite nice with these particular colours, but if you know if you were doing a wedding invite or something, I guess you might want to add a bit of metallic. There we go. So that's given me all my background ready for the floral. So let's assemble where we've got to so far before I die cut the florals. So the first thing I need to do, let's move that out of the way, is pop this patterned paper on. So I'll just put some double-sided tape on the back. Like so. And I've cut this slightly smaller than the card front, so I've just got a nice border around the edge. Then the craft card. Now I obviously need to make sure I've got space at the top for my florals when I pop this on. So don't put this too near the top. You kind of want to be relatively central and then the florals will go overhead. So about there I think. Then I've got this lovely delicate frame. So just a few dots of glue around the edge on here. Now, if you were smart, you would have cut, put some um, double sided adhesive maybe on the back of the card before you die cut, then this would just be um, sticky on the back. But I only ever think of that after I've already die cut it. I love that frame it just it just brings the colors all together because it just picks out the same aqua from the background so really nice um for the letters i'm going to lay them out before i stick them down because they're quite tight on space on here so if i make sure they're about where i want them then i'm going to grab my tweezers And I'll glue down the ampersand first in the centre. So we'll pop that about there, I think. Then we'll do the S. And I, you'll see I've done these slightly towards the lower half of the circle because I'm, you know, I'm mindful of the fact I'm going to have my floral spray. Can you hear the birds outside going absolutely crazy? I think they're fighting over my bird bath. Right, there we go. So now I'm ready to die cut my florals. So let's pop that to one side and we'll bring in 
I've already die cut a couple of the florals. So I'm going to use the, let's see, which set shall I use? Oh yes, I've got the Wild Blossom Borders. Um, or maybe, was it this one I used? No, actually, the one I used, it wasn't that one. You've got so much choice in these sets. Let me bring this card back, because actually I'll show you. Um, if you've got the Wild Blossom Border set, I think the smaller one from there would, would work size-wise. I'm going to use the Wild Blossom Corners, and I'm going to use this one here. I think that's the one I used. Yeah, that's the one I used. So I'm going to cut that from green to start with. Let's just trim that so I can get all of this on my platform for one go. So I'll pop that on my platform. And then I'm going to use the larger floral. Let me bring that back in because I need to just check. So you've, you've got the layering elements here again. And you need to check because these two large florals are both quite a little bit different. Yeah, that's the one for that. So I'm going to do the large floral from that lovely dusky pink. And then I'm going to pick out these smaller florals with this the nice eucalyptus blue colour. And that's this one here. And then there is a smaller one somewhere that's obviously fallen off my sheet. You'll find that in a minute. Right, so I'm going to run those through my machine. So we'll do the background first, then the two florals. And I have, as I said, I've already die cut a couple of the florals, so. Because this was a TV demo, where I know I need a couple of, of the same elements, I try and pre-cut some of them just to save, save the die cutting time a little bit. So I've got all my elements now. I love this. This is a real sort of spring green, this one. So that's going to look fabulous there. Right. And then I've got my blue and pink flowers. So I'm going to assemble this. So first of all, we'll stick down this lovely spray. I'm just going to use glue for this. You could use foam pads if you wanted to. And just a few dots here and there. That fits so nicely there. And then we'll do the big pink floral. Now I have layered all mine just with glue. Again, if you wanted more dimension, you could add some of these on foam pads so that they overlap nicely. Then we've got a large one here. So I'll just put a little bit of glue on there. And then I'll we'll just work out which way around that goes. I think it's that way. Yeah. There we go. So that pops on top of there. I love the way these layer up. And then I need two of the smaller ones, actually, and I've only done one. So um, I'll leave the other one for now. And I've got way too much glue there. And then that one layers on top of there. And then I would normally die cut it again and pop it there, but to save time, I won't do that step. So that is the second card. And we've got one more to, to share you, with you today. So I'll, again, I'll quickly tidy up and we'll move on to the last one. Okay, so the last demo I've got for you is using the frames and border set. And then I've used some of those elements from the wreath set for the leaves. So I'm just going to grab my wreath set. So what I've done is cut the leaves from watercolour cards. So I'll do that first. And you've got a really great selection of leaves in this set. So I'm going to cut all of them except that smallest one. So I'll run those through first. And again, I'm using watercolour card for these, as before. So, I'll just quickly run those through. There we go. So that's going to give me a nice selection. And I'll 
colour those in a second. So I'll just pop those out. Like so. So that's my leaves. And then what I've done is I've used the frames and borders set to cut a sentiment strip. So I've used these thinner, let's move these circles off so you can see. So I've used this set here and I've already cut from the cream card, this smallest one, and that's gonna give me a nice sentiment strip. So I've just stamped, thanks so much on that. And then I'm gonna layer this up as you can see. So I'm going to use the next two sizes I think I used, yeah. So the largest one is going to be from this aqua colour and then I'm going to have a nice thin frame from this lovely burgundy. So I'll just run those two through. Then I can layer this up with the sentiment strip that I've already done. There we go. Now, I'm sorry this video is a bit rough and ready. Um, I Usually for my videos, I film them and then edit them so that they're a bit more polished and I can kind of speed up areas. But um, I just quit, wanted to do this one quickly. Um, I've got more show prep to do for shows that are coming up. So I didn't really have time to do a proper edited version. So. I thought I'll just do them live as if I were doing them on TV really. So I apologise that they're a bit messy compared to my usual usual videos. If you um, already watch the videos on my here on my YouTube channel. So I'm just going to pop this one on first. Now while I'm talking about my YouTube channel actually, um, if you're not already subscribing to it, um, at the end of the video a box will come up that you can subscribe i do try and post videos a couple of month really and if you follow me on create and craft or anything like that you um you might want to subscribe so you don't miss any of my any of my videos um i will also um now you probably if you didn't manage to get this set before it sold out on Creating Craft, um, you probably want to try and get hold of it when it comes out everywhere else. I had a quick look on the internet and I'll put links in the description box below here on YouTube of other places you can get it. I don't think it's going to be available till the 1st of March looking at, um, I looked at Craft Stash and, Stash and they've got it on pre-order. So I'm guessing the retailers won't have it for another week or so. But that's not long to wait. So I'll put links there. If you're in the States, you can get it from scrapbook.com and I'll, I'll put a link there for, for that. Um, but in the UK, you could have a look at Create and Craft in case they've managed, if in case any have bounced back. Um, but otherwise, Craft Stash has it. You could also check your, your local craft shop if they're getting it in. But I think most places you look, you'll probably find that it's on pre-order just for the next week or so. So that's my sentiment strip and it just really pops when you've got that nice thin border, I think. I, I, I have a feeling I'm gonna use this die set a lot. So I've got my leaves next and I've just got a few pieces to poke out, I can see, before I colour them. And then I'm gonna do the same as I did earlier. I'm gonna use some oxide inks to colour these. And I'm going to stick with the same colour palette of the sort of blue and greens. Just poke out all these little pieces. There we go. And then we've got this tall one. And I'm going to vary the colours a little on these. There we go. So let's, if I slide that across a bit more, you'll hopefully be able to see better. So I'm going to go with speckled egg. Iced spruce. Oop iced spruce and bundle sage. I might need to reload those for all of these leaves and I'll just grab my paintbrush 
and more water. And let's start with this eucalyptus -y looking one because I know I like that in a bluey. And I'll just pop in a bit of, of uh, the iced spruce as well. So it's quite nice to, to put a couple of colours in to give a bit of variation. And then I think we'll do this one from the darker iced spruce. Like so. Then we'll move on to more green tones because this one I think looks like an olive branch. So we'll, we'll cover that with the green. And then I'm just going to put a few dots here and there of the iced spruce because that will kind of darken it up a little bit in places. And then this one here, I think we'll go for green on this one as well. Predominantly green. And then we'll maybe add a little bit of blue here and there. So that gives me a little bit of variation on them. You can go back in. I can see I've missed a couple of bits there. That one's got a lovely variation. A bit more on there. I'm happy with this one. It's got nice variety of colour. And then we'll just pop a bit more on there. Perfect. And I'll give those a quick dry with my heat tool. I think I am back on Crank Craft on the 2nd of March and from memory the 4th and 5th as well. But um, keep an eye on my Facebook page because you know I'll always put all the details there of what I'm doing because it, do, it does change sometimes. So should be dry enough now. So I can bring my card back across and... I think we'll start. I'm going to pop this one on first. And what I'm going to do, because let me bring in my original so you can see. I want to give this some height. So if I'd put that there, but by the time I put the others on, they're all just going to be on top of each other. So I'm going to put this slightly higher, which is going to look a bit odd to start with. But I want to create some height from this spray and I'm going to cover the bottom here so you can't see that I've done that. So let's have, let's go for this big, big sprig of this kind of olive looking. And we'll pop that there and straight away you can see that's instantly covered. The fact that that one was floating in midair a bit. <laughs> and then... Pop this one to add a bit of shape, and then lastly, this eucalyptus y looking one. I can see I've still got a bit of card stuck in there. There we go, a few dots of glue, like so. And then, as a final touch, I'm going to put some splatters of black paint, so I'll just grab some. And let's wipe away this oxide so I can use my white mat. You can use anything to do this with. This, um, this is chalkboard acrylic paint by Creative Expressions. But any, any black paint will do really. And it just adds a, a nice effect, I think. So I'll bring my water back. So I'm just going to put a little bit of the paint on my mat. This one's more of a grey, actually. I think I used a different one for my original card, but that's okay. So really, really water that down. And then just a few splatters here and there. And I, I think it really um, creates a nice little effect. And then I'm going to put that to one side to dry. It'll only take about 10 minutes to dry. And that's my last card. So let me bring back in all the others we've done so far. If I can find them all now. Yeah, here we go. Right, so we've got the first one we did was that one. Then we did the one with the rose gold circle. 
then we did the monogram one and then finally that one with that lovely little spray of spray of leaves so hopefully that's given you a few more ideas if you were lucky enough to grab that uh, collection from Lisa this week and um, again I've put details in the description box below on YouTube of all the, the names of the die sets and everything so you can find them if you want to go and get yourself some. Thanks for watching and I hope you've enjoyed this video. Bye!